Hello there and welcome to Sound Codex. In today's video I'll talk about aliasing or aliasing, whatever you want to call it. I'll explain what it is and how to solve this problem inside uh, PD. So aliasing occurs if you try to play back a frequency which is greater than half the sampling rate which your computer or device is using. The number that represents half the sampling rate is called Nyquist's number. And if you were to tell PD to play a frequency of 23,050 Hz, what you would hear is a one tone at that frequency and a second tone at 21,050 Hz, which is the exact difference between the Nyquist number and your synthesized sound. And the problem is that you'll hear both signals and we don't want it to, to be. This phenomenon is called fold over or aliasing because it produces aliases or copies of frequencies inside the spectrum. The solution to this problem is to use a waveform which produces fewer harmonics. This waveforms are called band-limited waveforms, band-limited signals in general. We can combine uh, sine waveforms together to produce specific shapes uh, in the waveform. And we could do so in PD using a very simple method called sine sum, and you can um, see it right here. Sine sum is used inside a message and the message we are dealing with is an internal message because it starts with a semicolon and make sure to do a line break so to press a return key after your semicolon and start typing from uh, the second line. We specify the name of the array we are uh, using, in my case it's my array. We declare the method which is sign sum, we specify the number of sample we are using and then from this argument we list the amplitude values of each harmonic frequency of our signal. If we use just one number it will produce a sine wave and we can hear it. We use a simple phaser which multiplies its output values from 0 to 1 from 0 to 2050. So Tabread now can read throughout our array from values 0, index 0, up to 2050. Then our Tabread uh, sends its data to Tabread so we can visualize the waveform in time in a different array and the audio signal goes into a DAC thanks to which we can listen to the sound. Now, what if we want to produce different waveforms? As I said a few seconds ago, uh, we need to sum different sine waves at different frequencies uh, using different amplitudes, which are listed from here, from this argument uh, to the right. So, if you want to generate a SO wave, the amplitude of each harmonic is defined by the formula 1 divided by the index uh, of the harmonic. So our first harmonic has index 1, so we divide 1 by 1 and this is the value. Uh, the second harmonic has an index of 2, so we divide 1 by 2 and we obtain an amplitude of 0 0.5 and so on. Now, I listed here uh, 12 harmonics, the first 12 harmonics. And if you press this message, you'll see this mess right here. So our signal is going above and below our limits, which are 1 and minus 1. Now, to fix that, you have to write a second internal message. So start with the semicolon then type the name of your array and use the keyword normalize and declare oops normalize and declare the value 
to which you want to normalize your signal. And here we are. Our band limited so wave produced with 12 harmonics. Now let's move to the triangular wave. To produce it we use only the odd harmonics and we use zeros to fill um, the amplitudes of the even harmonics. The formula is 1 divided by the square root of each harmonic index. And our odd harmonics needs to be one positive and the other negative, positive and negative. So you alternate positive and negative values to the odd harmonics. So here I've listed again 12 harmonics amplitudes and the result is, is this. So this is a band limited triangular wafer. Now let's move on and talk about the last waveform, which is the square wave, which uses only the odd numbered harmonics. Zero is used for the even ones. The formula only for odds harmonic, one divided by the index number of the harmonic. These are the first 12 harmonics of a square wave and let's see if everything is fine. Yes, it is. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you want to know more or if you have any questions or even if you want to uh, suggest new topics for future videos, please let me know in the comment sections and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.